Hi guys, I'm Kasha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee times. Today I decided to make this video in order to tell you guys which are some of the movies and a couple of TV shows that are horror that I'm really excited and are still supposed, fingers crossed, to come out in the second part of the year. It's coffee time! So exciting news, by the time you are watching this video, I'm gonna be sitting in a cinema watching A Quiet Place 2. Again, this year I'm going to go to the Fantasy Film Fest. In summer, normally it's only a couple of days, so it's only from Thursday to Sunday, and I'm going to attempt to watch 14 movies and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I will report back on that But of course it also got me thinking of some of the movies that I am still hoping are gonna come here to the theaters And I'm gonna be able to go and watch it with my popcorn and my coffee So I just decided to put a list of some that I am particularly excited about before we jump to the list Please consider subscribing if you love horror movies collectibles and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more coffee times. Let's start with the month of July. There is a couple of things that are extremely exciting. that are coming to Netflix, so I'm gonna be able to binge them right away. The first thing I would like to talk to you about is the Fear Street trilogy. These are three movies that are being released on Netflix, one per week in the month of July. These are based on the novels of the Fear Street series by Errol Stein, and part one is supposed to take place in 1990. Part 2 is in 1978 and part 3 is going to be set in 1666. So we are actually gonna go back in time and for what I was able to see in the trailer they do look fairly similar to the vibe that you get from the books but of course it's a little bit modernized, a little bit adapted for the modern viewer, um, a little bit corny perhaps but I am extremely excited to watch them after after the trailer dropped, I was, you know, sold. We follow a couple of teenagers that are investigating some terrifying events that are happening in their hometown shady side in Ohio and I'm really excited. I also really like the cast for these films so I will be reviewing them as they are being released by Netflix. Netflix is also giving us in July a movie and it is an Italian movie that looks fantastic and it is called a classic horror story. The trailer I appreciated that was fairly short so there is not too much we know about this movie. It is about five people that are traveling on a camper and they hit a tree and when they wake up after being unconscious they realize that the road is gone and there's only an impenetrable forest and a wooden house and that's all and it just sounds amazing and I personally do love horror Italian movies so I'm really excited for this release. Next we have Escape Room Tournament of Champions and honestly after watching the first Escape Room I was excited for the sequel and now that I have seen the trailer of part two I am not so sure it's gonna be that great. We follow here different survivals from uh, escape rooms that are being now thrown into this tournament of survivors and I don't know what to think about it. I'm still gonna watch it because anything that has to do with escape room, I'm definitely interested, but I have the feeling that this one might be a letdown. Then we have a British movie called Censor, and in this movie we follow somebody that, you know, whose job is to censor movies. So they have to go through movies and decide which parts have to be censored. And also it is somebody that's struggling with her sister's disappearance. It has been so long since her sister disappeared that she has been officially proclaimed death. That is until she is editing one of those movies that she received and she starts to realize that there might be something there that it is, you know, bringing back to her memories of her sister's disappearance. Then we have from M. N. Shyamalan 
old and this is inspired on a graphic novel called Sandcastle and actually Knight received these as a present for her Father's Day and after reading it decided to buy the rides for it and I have seen the trailer of this one and I loved it I also love the poster the trailer might have been a tad too long it might have revealed a little bit too much but it is uh, following a couple of different people that are on a holiday on an island and suddenly they get to this beach that seems to have a very specific power which is it is turning people older really really fast and if you've seen the trailer you know that it looks pretty cool I really want to watch this movie and discover the mystery with his movies it is mostly a hit or a miss for me so I'm really hoping I'm gonna enjoy this one then we have Jeepers Creepers Reborn with a new director and this is going to be the fourth installment in the franchise but this is supposed to be a reboot that is going to start a brand new trilogy with a new director we are following a festival called Horror Hound in Louisiana and it's supposed to attract nerds and geeks and people that love horror and all of those good things so I'm excited for that part see how that works out in the movie and of course somebody heard about these uh, legend of the creeper after he starts having nightmares that involve these creatures so I personally really really love the figure of the creeper so I am excited in a way to have it back but as always when you know you have a new reboot or retake on a franchise that you enjoyed I'm also a little bit skeptic the next one I don't think it needs a lot of explanation but that is uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife and these uh, takes place after the events of the second movie ignoring the reboot which I'm thankful for I've never watched the reboot nor do I want to and I'm really excited about this particular one because I love the cast I love what I've seen so far and and Ghostbusters is a movie that I did watch as a kid and I do hold a special place in my heart so I am really excited for this one it follows a single mother that moves to Oklahoma with her two kids and they discover there that the grandfather has some sort of relationship with the original Ghostbusters next we have the night house and this one i am particularly excited about because it is by the same director that did the ritual on netflix which it has been one of my absolute favorite netflix exclusives i love the ritual so much so i'm super excited to see something new by the same director after her husband's sudden death rebecca is left alone in a lakeside house and there she starts having some nightmares that she cannot explain she's starts feeling that there's some sort of hunting the house some kind of presence in there and when she starts investigating she starts to uncover dark secrets from her husband's past and coming at least on VOD on July is Werewolves Within by Josh Rubin and this is by the be inspired by the video game of the same name and Josh Rubin did scare me a movie that really surprised me and I really enjoyed for being a comedy and this is also supposed to be a horror comedy a snowstorm has trapped some residents in a local inn in a small town and they are faced now with a danger that it's outside and that is a mysterious creature I'm really excited about this one and it kind of reminds me a little bit to the Wolf of Snow Hollow that I watched last year and absolutely loved so I'm really really hoping that I'm gonna enjoy this one also the poster looks fantastic moving on to August we have finally Candyman that was written by Jordan Peele and I'm really really excited and this is a direct sequel to the 1992 movie and it's going to follow someone that moves into a town and is being told the legend of the Candyman I don't really know too much about this one I don't really want to I kind of want to go and be surprised knowing that Jordan Peele wrote this movie gives me high hopes and knowing that uh, Tony Todd is gonna be back gives me high hopes so fingers crossed that I'm gonna love it 
we're also finally going to get the final purge which is going to be the fifth and final movie of this franchise that i absolutely love and i've seen the trailer a couple of times now because it's running in the cinemas here and it follows a mexican couple that is trying to escape from a drug cartel and they end up in texas now the thing with this movie is after the purge officially ends people ignore that and they still keep committing crimes ignoring that and they are calling it the forever purge so every day anytime you can't just purge wouldn't that be the dream next we have don't breathe 2 by the same director that brought us the first installment and i really really enjoyed don't breathe so i'm hoping that we're still gonna get something fresh in this one because we're still following the same blind veteran in this film he has been isolated in a cabin and has been taking care of an orphaned girl when a group of criminals comes to kidnap the girl and he has to of course get his revenge so i'm hoping that they're going to keep the same kind of idea that the first movie had but they're gonna bring some new elements to the story so that you know it keeps being entertaining and we're not just gonna see a reboot of the first part in september we have malignant and i'm gonna make this quick because this is the new james one movie and it is an original idea that he had and honestly there is still no plot that i could find so it is complete mis mystery but i am extremely excited for this one because he also was not able of course to uh, direct the conjuring 3 because he was involved in different projects including this one in october we get a british psychological horror movie called last night in soho another one that a lot of people including myself have been expecting and finally hopefully we'll be able to see this before the end of the year we follow a young girl with a passion for fashion design and a sixth sense and one day she gets somehow teletransported in time to 1966 to the body of one of her idols and that is all i know it sounds interesting because there are not that many horror movies uh, that have a time travel in them and i'm super excited for this one we also finally hopefully are going to be able to see halloween kills and this is a direct sequel to halloween from 2018 and it's going to follow the events of that first film i still remember i watched halloween 2018 in birmingham in england while i was there for a convention and since then i've been waiting for the this movie and it seems like it's been forever so it's going to be the second one on this new trilogy that will end hopefully next year with Halloween ends in November we're getting Resident Evil welcome to Raccoon City and this is supposed to hit the cinemas hopefully between October November mostly it's gonna be November but this is a reboot of the film franchise and I am excited the first um you know movies from Resident Evil they're kind of guilty pleasures we all know they're not the best but we all enjoy watching them and part of them is because of Mila she is fantastic so I am excited to see if they're gonna do something completely different with this new reboot so Raccoon City is now a dying city and it has been left as a wasteland due to Umbrella's corporations accident and so this follows the survivors and the dangers that they have to face i'm really really excited in december we have a thriller a drama thriller so this is not particularly horror but i have to mention this one because it's directed by guillermo del toro and that is nightmare alley and actually there was already a movie by this name from 1947 and they're both inspired by the novel of the same name from 1946 the movie follows the rise and fall of a con man and also follows a traveling carnival so i'm really excited because i'm expecting the visuals to be so good considering that guillermo is doing this one and finally hopefully before the year ends i will finally be able to see 
Antlers. I've been talking about this movie since the end of 2019 and here we are. <laughs> we got the trailer at the beginning of 2020 I believe and we're still waiting. So this is produced by Guillermo del Toro so I think he had a lot to do probably with the creature that is in this movie. So I have high expectations for this and we follow a teacher that is worried because one of her students seems to have a creature kept in his house a supernatural creature that talks to him and I'm just super excited to finally hopefully by the end of the year be able to watch this. As for this year there's a couple of movies that have been announced to be released in 2021 but they do not have a release date yet. Some of them are The Manor, Hatching, Terrifier 2 and There is Someone Inside Your House. As for TV shows, of course I'm excited for Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. This is a series that is coming to Netflix, an animated series. This one is going to follow Leon and Claire that we all know from the franchise and we all love. So I'm hoping to really enjoy it because it does follow some of the characters that we all love from the video games. But the TV show that I'm most excited about and also brought to us thanks to Netflix is The Midnight Club. This is going to be 10 episodes based on The Midnight Club, a book by Christopher Pike and also it's going to include some stuff from his other works and it's going to be directed by Mike Flanagan whom I absolutely love. He's become one of my absolute favorites because his vision on horror and he has also no fear when it comes to show you things. I just love his take on horror so much. I'm super excited for this one. It follows a group of terminally ill patients that live at a hospice and they normally just meet to tell each other spooky stories, ghost stories, and they make a pact one day that once one of them dies it has to come back to contact them from the other side. And a series coming to Epics in August is Chapel Wait, and I'm probably not gonna be able to see this one because I don't have access to that channel, but it is inspired by Jerusalem's Lot, which is a story by Stephen King. So obviously at some point I'm hoping to have access to it. And also promised for 2021, but with no release date as of yet, we have in Netflix the new Resident Evil live action TV series. So hopefully it's still going to happen before the end of the year. All right, you guys, so these are some of the horror things that are coming in 2021 still hopefully. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what are you most excited about that it's still supposedly, allegedly, still coming out in 2021. Let's talk about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please give the video a big thumbs up for support. And I hope to see you all as always in the next coffee time. Bye!